Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to MBTV. I'm Captain Lush, your regular host on the channel. I'm joined by Aaron Wentz-Trewent. How are you doing? I am doing fine, thank you. Good to have you with us, my friend. Um, it's always great to be back. Tonight we've got a pretty sweet game. It's Irish Rebels vs. One Weekend. I know a lot of people are playing right now, but hopefully we're going to uh, have a nice big group of people watching the game anyway. And uh, see so what goes down in this uh, interesting clash. Irish Rebels vs. One Wookie. We're thinking, I mean, we talked a little bit about this before the stream started. We're leaning towards Irish Rebels with this one. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's hard to call. One Wookie are obviously higher in the table at the moment at the third place. Right. Third place, are they? Aren't they? I believe <laughs> not. I think I checked and think. Oh, I don't think they are third. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's what it says on the stream. And Irish Rebels are seventh, but. Um, well, one week were unbeaten until last week when they uh, had their run defeated. Um, our shovels have had not such an easy time. They've had a bit of a mixed bag, actually. That was revealed in the Facebook interview that you just published, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, we uh, had a lovely interview from Toy. It's been a bit up and down for our shovels, let's face it. Yeah, they, they, they've won three, lost two so far. But I think they've come off the back of a win, right? They've actually they've actually won three, uh, lost one, and drawn one. Oh yes, that's right. They had the draw with uh, FTW. Okay. Week four and last week, yeah, they won twelve one against Castellans. That's a pretty good win. Mhm. Mm um, going up against one Wookie. I mean, I think one Wookie. A lot of people might think they're a bit overplaced right now. Perhaps they're saying a little bit too high. Um, Irish Rebels, obviously beating them would change that um, bring them a bit further down the table but obviously you know they still could actually get through the game could be a very difficult one as well because one would keep been flying high all season really playing much much better than anyone really expected Matafix in particular been putting in some great performances uh, Commander SPQR formerly known as Anaconda absolutely fantastic player and you know a very very experienced leader at this point in spite of being a, a young chap So uh, really, they're capable of doing anything, I think, and, uh, and surprising us. We are actually missing one of the key players listed in true MBTV tradition. <laughs> uh, that's going to be Hagrid, not available for this game. I'm not sure exactly what class Hag Hagrid plays. Again, a bit of an enigma. The one wookie team, they they do weird things with their names. They're, they're very hard to track down. They're not as well known as the the you know the bigger the bigger sides. So that could be a problem for IR, I suppose. Perhaps not as sure. Of what they're going up against, but they know, they know at least that one we got some dangerous archers, and I think that's what they're concerned about because that's what they mentioned in the Facebook interview, I believe. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I have to confess that I don't know the Facebook interview off by heart. That's, yeah, that's um, but yeah, but obviously the the first map being very open. It's, uh... Yes, that's a nice segue. Oh. Actually, um, we are going to be playing Reverend Village and Vendetta. Both interesting ones. Um, both actually maps that went in in the, in the original push in of maps, uh, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> like the original uh, effort to actually bring community maps into the competitive scene. Reverend Village and Vendetta were brought in alongside Frosty Battle and Sandy Bush. Um, I, I, do, I quite like Vendetta, I gotta say. I don't mind seeing it reintroduced. It can be a little bit cagey at points, but uh, we see great games on there all the time, so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that map as well. Reverend I Village. really like Vendetta. I really do. Yeah, it's cool, <laughs> I, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, people say that like, the one-way ladders are unbalance it, but yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the unbalanced, <laughs> shifty nature of the whole thing. Um, yeah, well, for the ladders anyway. I think we should see more of that. Yeah, a little bit less balance in some of the maps. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right then. So, first it's going to be Reverend Village, though, created by Archer, my former clan leader, and um, one of the great characters of Warband history, I'd say. Very, very nice chap. Um, the map is a cool one, very popular, both sides of the Atlantic. Saranids versus Swadia. Tell me what you think about that. Um... Well, I think some people have been saying that um, Swadia has been uh, dominant on been dominant. this map this oh, really? week. 
Um, it obviously has good cavalry and it's an open map. I gotta say, I love crossbows on this map as well because you've got loads of corners, loads of awkward spots. Crossbows are really, really nice. I've, I've had some great crossbow games here. And obviously, shooting against Sarinos feels good as well because you can bring the horses down, you don't have many good helmets, so headshots off on land. Yeah, but then you also have the thing where crossbows have to reload and archers can shoot fast. Of course. Yeah, you're right. I think it's real life. Okay, so are we gonna hit the map intro? I think we should do it. Alright, into the game we go. We are now live, one Wookiee playing as the Saranids first. In that yellow, that lovely yellow colour that the Saranids play in. Actually playing with the wrong banners there because of uh, a little bit of confusion. But they are in up against the Irish Rebels playing as the Orange Red Swadians. And interestingly, we've already got some uh, cool stuff coming out here. You can see Jubeg playing as the cavalryman with a crossbow, so a bit of crossbow dropping and some interesting stuff coming out of Irish Rebels. Class setups, um, infantry light I'd say, surprisingly so, I mean, we're only seeing one infantry for Irish Rebels, uh, two for one Wookiee, but still pretty low I think for this map. I mean, you can play it, you can play this map kind of, I would say, almost with any possible class setup, you can play this map, it depends on how you, on how you uh, run with it. But I still think perhaps maybe slightly light on infantry. Two or three I'd expect to see in most cases. Uh, it's going to be Drags playing low infantry as well, which is also kind of an interesting choice. I mean, when you're in a team with Sphere, Virus and Toy, sure, it makes sense if you're going to have to play infantry. A lot of Grey Archers on that side, but uh, I still really consider Drags to be a bit of a ranged player more than anything. Well, having said that, I do have a hunch that he at least prefers bows to crossbows. Sphere and here, the former IG player, are going to be seeing what he can do with the uh, crossbow here. Trying to get a hit off on Horus. Also playing his archer there, trying to find some space. Feeling a little bit tense, actually, under a bit of pressure. Does it get brought down by a brilliant shot from Sphere there? All the way from over the other side of the map. And uh, that's a big, big hitter for Bournemouth. brought down very early on there. Not able to get anything done. Anchor's brought down as well in Irish Rebels. Uh, looking pretty comfortable here, already causing problems for. The one wookie. Commander SPQR has been real up there as well. Drags now starting to raise the flag. I mean, it remains. One wookie to make their move. Virus with their headshot as well. And Irish Rebels really making these crossbows work for them right now. I tell me, can one wookie do, do anything with their cab? They just seem to be running into each other at the moment. That's the IR cab, having said that. Now, the cab start to move. Can they turn this fight around? It doesn't seem like it. So, Beck gets stuck in. Brings down Slav. And the team girl from Magnus is just... Well, it's going from... Bad to worse at the, uh, the current situation. Sphere does bring down Commander SPQR. Just two players remain. 4 1 Wookie. And Irish Rebels will be taking home the first round of, of the match, it looks like. And could it be with the Whitewash as well? Unless Henrik can make anything happen here. That's going to be the situation. Henrik starting to flee. Might actually, might actually stay alive. I continue to raise the flag. Nice hit off there on uh, Jubeg. Yeah, look, this is my side. No, eventually brought down by Sebek there. Pick up a second kill of the round, and not a great start there from one Wookie. Uh, you did mention that you think that some people have suggested some Swadian dominance on this map, yeah, but uh, not not perhaps a whitewash. Not, yeah, but of course, once once you get the first win, by dear, then yeah, that can can lead, can lead to a bit of a snowball, especially if it's a whitewash yeah. as well, and you know, you've not had anyone really lose much money. Uh, and you know, you've got to look at the the players here. Uh, all of these IR guys, really, really top, um, top players. Hopkin in there, uh, recently played in the WPL final for the losing side, but uh, had a very, very great game there playing high ping on the US servers. And you've got Hopkin, Drags, Necromancin, Sebek, uh, all of these guys really, really top players. And obviously, you're looking at the bottom, you've got, you know, <laughs> I feel like it's almost insulting to the ones I haven't mentioned now, but you know, everyone on that team is, uh, is absolutely top. Yeah, and the, the, the archery in the last round. 
That was really great. The, the early kill from Sphere yeah. just set the tone, didn't it? Yeah. Get a huge advantage to take a couple of people down quite early in the round. Uh, it's often said about IR that they are they're the team who takes in um, you know, uh, a team to support their numbers in lock tournaments. And they did this in ECS with SRC, right? Yeah. But the, the SRC players seem to have really in integrated now. And what was formerly a German team is now some sort of like German Polish fusion side. And they're looking really, really strong. Um, they they seem to be playing together very, very well uh, as well. Yeah, and, and, I, I think and, they've, and they've, they've, they've added in some integrated. really awesome players to their roster as well. I mean, I mean Sebek and Virus in there especially. I think these are huge players. Nations Cup winning players from that fantastic war banning nation of Poland. Flag is more in the marketplace now, and well, one wiki going to be trying to isolate a few players. They have managed to actually uh, dehorse Jubeg. That's a nice start from the one wiki cab playing a bit more of a harassing role this time. Good job to start this round. If you can deal with Jubeg, it'll be even better. I'm not able to actually take him down. I think they might want to. Uh, might not have to just stop being a dead horse with this one because they've got to, they've got to actually move in. Okay, they do manage to bring down Jubik eventually. Some nice cap teamwork. They've got to turn their attention to the flag now. They do have a player advantage. Eight players to the seven of IR. There's still seven of IR players standing strong. Drag's raising the flag. A minute remains on the clock. Sphere in a very, very difficult spot to deal with over there. Do what he can to take pot shots. And one wiki remain hesitant. They do, have to, they do have two infantry that they could move on to this flag at this point. 40 seconds remain. I, and i got to say, when 40 seconds remain, that's the time where you could just start going for that flag if you want to, if you want to win this round. One wiki, however, seem to be occupied elsewhere. Here it goes down. I think they're concerned about the cross flag. They haven't actually taken control of the flag at this point, though. 30 seconds remain, and they're doing pretty well. Flushing out some of these archers. Sphere still up. Virus still up, though, and making himself known. Gets the pick on Horus. Magnus doing something to reverse the flag situation, which is starting to look more even now. Sphere's going to start moving to melee, I believe. But one wicked looking more numerous on this flag. Eight seconds remain, and well, now Irish Rebels, they got the higher flag just about. Could this be a draw, though? Could we even see a round draw? It looks like we're going to see a round draw. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. the, the uh, situation. Big, big round. One wiki almost looking like they could take that. A uh, bit of a slip up there, I think, from IR because they weren't looking too weak, but they, they did give away the flag and they did let one wiki raise it up to that point. But well, we did see the draw. And now, draws have an interesting place in the new system because in the previous system... Um, why don't you explain this, uh, what, what's happening now? Um, in in the, the match format, after the match format change. Route, draws okay, have become so, a different yeah, beast. It's, well, it's now f first to three. So, um, so the draw actually doesn't really mean very much. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's uh, now we're not, not losing. Yeah. It's it's not like it's one of the four rounds and that's gone. It's still first to three, so. And they're just going to keep playing um, until until one of them. The one of them hits three. three. So an extra round for free there, and um, the only effect of the draw in that sense is to shift up the gold balance. And Wombuki well, we did a pretty good job of getting some kills on the board, uh, killing a few of the Irish rebels, forcing them to rebuy some equipment. I mean, I wouldn't say they really. Uh, made much ground but they certainly they they resetted a few of the IR players at least. Having said that they're still seeing virus and sphere sitting with chainmail. And they've actually moved over towards the forest here. Is it possible that they can be gambling on this open flag? Because they've made a really, really strong movement over towards this uh, far right open side. One wiki just remaining pretty tight, pretty tense in the center. You gotta bear in mind the flag cannot spawn in that marketplace position as well. So one wiki not really making the most of this. Flag just spawn the open here as well, so it's a nice move from Irish Rebels. Wombuki going to start to move over as a group. And the infantry of Wombuki really not being able to be at all effective so far. I think Drags has had a, a, taken a nice role only on the flags. He's done done the job for his team, but uh, Wombuki by taking two infantry, haven't they haven't uh, manipulated the fight enough or controlled it enough to actually make use of those infantry and put them in a good position. And that's been a problem for them because it's essentially, it's like... Uh, by by not having that extra horseman or archer, you really need to gain something from having the infantryman, and that's just not what they're doing right now. They're not getting anything from it. Gibby, I don't know where he's going right now. I'll continue to move archers around and actually really starting to dominate the space right now. 
Vice up in a great spot by the tree. Sphere over by the um, yeah, the forest as well, along with Toy. Vice is backing off. Yeah, Vice up to back off. He's got drags covering him. Yeah, it looks like Wombic are going to be doing the same kind of thing, trying to flush out these cross wide positions, but do they have the time to, to do this with all these players and move into the forest against all of this cow? I don't know if they do. They might just have to try their chances on the flag, I believe. Yeah, it's only 50 seconds left. Uh, and there's a lot of indecision right now. Gibby and Magnus not really doing much at all at the moment. They are going to move down towards the flag. I think it's a good spot. Drag's recognising that he needs to be there as well. He cannot let these one wiki uh, get too high get too high on the flag. But he's letting them raise it, though. And this, this could be significant, I think, because uh, 30 seconds left, and I don't think that either side is going to go down completely. Now, one wiki's starting to control the flag. I think this could be a one wiki round. But let's see what happens. Drag's now starting to get in involved here. They're playing pretty cautious. Sevic is reared up. The cab come in, desperately trying to get something done here. First kill does come in from Gibby, though. Sevic has dropped to the ground. Virus, though, with the response on Command on, SPQR, but I think both teams left it too long. I don't think all these one wiki are going to go down. Gibby getting forced off the flag, though, and now Drag's evening up the flag. I could we see another draw here? This is, this is the possibility right now. I think we could be seeing two draws in a row, but Gibby brings down Drags, and then that's what we can do this man in time. But he can! Is it going to be another draw? Oh, not, a, not again! Second A second draw in a row? My god! And it was really tense there as well. I, th I really thought the one we were going to take it. Interestingly, of course, there is no... Um, there is nothing to do. If they keep drawing, they just have to keep playing. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's nothing this, rules this, this about if one team can't win. Theoretically last forever. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas obviously in the, in the previous match format that wouldn't be the case. Okay, it's okay. I don't really need to sleep. I'm not that hungry. <laughs> oh yeah, interesting point there. Being made by Anchor, they can boost their kills. Um, for people in chat, uh, the flags, it, it's not measured to the millimeter, so you, they need to, there is like a, a minimum uh, degree of significance. Um, in terms of how how far apart the flags need to be, so if the flags are sort of within an inch of each other, then it will just be registered as a draw. There's, you've got to be like a good foot in between. Um, Amro, can you can you translate what a foot is for countries that use the metric system? <laughs> it's about thirty centimeters. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> it's the big subway. I don't understand that reference. Subway is a, a popular food chain that sells sandwiches and the large size is a foot long. Or 30 centimeters in uh, metric nations. Like spawned in the middle again. Yeah, yeah marketplace flag. Matt, so it's going to shift forward. Could be a risk there if it sounds on that wall. Counter fire. Seems like Arsha was going to try and yeah, control this fence air again. That's how they do seem to like playing this flag. Sphere going to move into his uh, default spot. Um, right behind that fence. Looking for some action. Looking to try to get something done around this corner. But Wombuki once again playing very, very cagey. They're going to make their move onto the flag late this time. Smart move here by Drag. going to raise the flag really early. And that's going to that's gonna put pressure on Wombuki. Because uh, turning this around again is going to be very, very difficult. We're going to see one wiki move forward, uh, recognizing that they need to deal with this flag. They do have time left, but uh, it's going to be going to be a little bit difficult, I think. Here, in comes Slav. Oh, it does get caught up really badly there, actually. I have some teammates in to support him, but yeah, he got completely beaten up by the combined efforts of uh, Seb, Sebek and Sphere. Uh, Gibby losing his shield at this point as well. They have a really hard time staying alive on this flag. They have managed to even up a little bit, but it's still going to be enough, and they're losing players here. Great double kill from Hopkin there, and I, I think our job was going to take this. Uh, whatever, it's the fourth round. <laughs> oh, coming close back though, Henrik and Horace picking up kills right now. And the flag evening up again, a nice kill from Magnus too. And now when Wookiee shift the, shift the, the uh, balance into their favour, Magnus brought down, but if when we keep piling onto the flag, they could have a chance here. Losing some crucial kills though at this point, and it's three against four, they've got to get onto the flag now. Henrik gets mounts, great kill from Horace there as well. Bumble and Jubeg and Thrill on very, very low health. If they can bring down these players, they do have a chance. The flag gets higher for our troubles though right now. In 15 seconds, if they can stay alive on this flag, that's going to see in the round. Herrick loses his... Does lose his shield, but it's still alive here. And Iris, Iris moves in. Now, can they end this fight, Wombuki? Can they... Can anyone end this fight? Or is it going to be Irish Rebels? It's going to be Irish Rebels taking this round. The clock runs out. The flag is high, and Irish Rebels take the 2-0 lead. After the fourth round here. In spite of Wombuki eventually taking the... Taking control of this fight, so... 
Once again, perhaps a little bit too hesitant from one Wookiee, but they did a great job of evening that up after it looked like all hope was lost. I do have a chance to turn this around and get something going. Now again, what they've done, which is very, very important there, is get a lot of kills, which is going to really slow down the goal progression for our troubles. We're not seeing too much mail here. Sphere, Virus with the mail, but I don't think we don't think we have anyone else. They're totally not able to afford it. And it's just the high kill count of Sphere and Virus that's going to carry them through, but overall I think a pretty good round there from one Wookiee. Shame they weren't able to clinch it for the uh, for the flag win. Henry could be very careful there. And especially great work there from Horace, who seems to be getting a lot of important kills. And uh, really got sort of getting the, the one Wookiee team going. Henrik has managed to actually loot uh, a long all pike there as well, which is pretty significant. It's a very, very useful weapon to use on horseback. And the fact that he's now able to use that against um, our troubles who have opted to deal with a couple of their cavalry. It's going to even up the odds a little bit. Very, very high damage on that long all pike. But... <laughs> Oh yeah, gonna lose the He's horse. He's lost there. his horse. Let's stay alive though, and uh, if they can turn this around, it could still be uh, an alright situation. Uh, suddenly falling under range, range fire there from the opposite side. Doing his best to stay alive here. Oh, brilliant shot by Toy gonna bring down Slav. That's a big blow to one Wookie. Henrik able to mount the horse though. That's gonna, that's gonna help deal with things a little bit. Horace has been brought on elsewhere, and yeah, it seems like a one Wookie made a little bit of a push right now, which has not worked out too great, but. One SPQ does bring back one kill there. Oh, brilliant shot from Anchor. They're going to take down Hopkin. And now that turns things around a little bit. Sphere going to get into the fight, but he's got very low health there. If he's brought down against Anchor, it's not going to be ideal for him. We'll move over to see what uh, Gibby and Magnus are doing there, the two infantry. Henrik is going to bring down Drags, and uh, Wombuki having these um, having these infantry men is going to help them out a lot here, I think. Henrik lost his horse again. Sphere doing a good job of keeping Anchor busy for a long time. Especially considering that he's got very, very low health there. It's a big risk, but it does pay off. Henrik now, as you, as you mentioned, lost his horse. Going to move in to try and deal with these range players. But great spacing here from Virus and Toys, giving them the advantage. Magnus has been brought down. That's going to force Gibby into melee. He's getting shields done there as well. Difficult situation. Nice weaving, but eventually brought down by Sebek. And it's just Anchor remaining. Great shot earlier by Anchor against Hopkin, but I think, I think his days are numbered. Yeah, it takes a hit there. Oh, brilliant kill against Sphere. Not quite over yet, but I think Sebek is going to be going to be his end. That's going to see it through. So Irish Rebels do take the 3-0 lead after five rounds of play, and well, they do get the result, but I wouldn't I would say not swimmingly smooth there for uh, for Irish Rebels. What do you think? Yeah, well, 3-0 lead, 3-0 score doesn't. Tell the tale of it, really, does it? Because of those two, two drawn rounds. It, um, Exciting rounds, though. With a little bit of luck, <laughs> it could have been at least three two. Yeah, and one Wookie not quite able to capitalise on a couple of chances they had. Um, not a great sign, actually, uh, if a team isn't really taking those chances. If a team isn't turning those opportunities into round wins, uh, that, um, that can often lead to their demise. Yeah. Lady Ruth, the right faction, then. Then they have a chance to come back, you're saying? Right? Yeah, well, it's something to consider. Okay. Yeah, it's possible if they, if they can turn things around as uh, a Swadia. But you know, they have to get 3 0 here to, to stay level with their opponents. Can be tricky business. And nevertheless, they could they could perhaps make it happen. Uh, I think the one Wookiee infantry they they were useful at certain points. They they did make the, their impact felt, um, but there were some some rounds where they just were fairly non-eventful. The flag timing was very awkward as well from both sides. I think, uh, which which created the interesting rounds that we saw. But it just seems teams not totally sure how to play it, when to move in, what's the right time. I th well, I think the difficulty for one Wookiee was that they were wanting to deal with the crossfire before they moved in on the flag, right, yeah, and no, they didn't right have time to do. Might have time to do that. Yeah. If that's the case, you know, then maybe they need to be a bit more decisive about that as well and commit to it more. But you know, they had the uh, awkward, um, they had the awkward round, like the one over in the, by the campfire. 
and perhaps a bit more coordinated. It, it sometimes felt that perhaps they weren't they weren't all moving at the same time. Right. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. Uh, Irish was a pretty solid overall, I thought. Um, a couple of times, I guess they just they just melted down a little bit, lost a couple, few too many uh, people to melee kills and um, cav cav pass bys and range. You know, all kinds of ways they were sort of losing losing players that they perhaps shouldn't have done. And looking a little bit, a little bit shaky on rounds where they were winning, and should have seen them through a bit more. That was, if anything, my only criticism for Irish was. But looking pretty solid, looking like the kind of team that um, have have class and they're just causing. I mean, they're just proving a little bit too much for one wiki right now. Hop, yeah. Hopkin playing great. Sphere and Virus obviously racking up loads of kills, and um, one wiki not really with a great response for for any of that, to be honest. Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We should, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes for them as Swadia. Um, great great round they... so far. It's been a good game, at least. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, as you, with the drawn rounds, it, it shows it's more, more even than perhaps the school shows. Yeah, true that. I definitely agree. Okay. Now, Ramon, let's jump back into the game. Where we see Irish Rebels currently leading 3-0 against their opponents. The one Wookie. Whatever that is. I don't know what one Wookie means. I have no clue. <laughs> the Irish Rebels aren't even Irish. Don't yeah, it's a war pad team name for a bit. There are some good ones. <laughs> what, what are some good ones? Hmm, good team names. I quite like, I quite like Castellans. A lot of them are pretty bad, though, thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, possibly relating to, to the single player game, which I don't play, so... I don't think it is. That's more mm -hmm. like God of and stuff. Anyway, let's... Yeah, uh, why was he talking about team names in okay. general? Okay, alright, fine. <laughs> sounds... Uh, let's see what the teams have done. They've both gone for two infantry this time, I think. A little bit more standard. Uh, they've got to make sure it's working, though. Maybe Super Lily and Drag's playing infantry. Um, pretty nice call. Super Lily has been put on the... Key players watch list for Irish Rebels. Been racking up some real big scores lately. I with a pretty deep roster as well. You can just see Warringham uh, jumping out there. Uh, great player. Only two archers. Yes, for Irish Rebels. Uh, obviously not putting much faith in the Sarnid archers. That seems to be the case. And they're going to be going for a full suit of four cavalry. Against just three for on one wiki playing the the three three two. Uh, I I actually like one wiki setup here. I think they got a good chance. They, they, as long as they don't get harassed too much by the cavalry and, and they can bring them down. Um, they, sh they should be set. Under IR's feet there and they're already raising. Yeah, and this is going to be this is going to be the, the thing for one wiki right now because they're now dealing with two infantry, which is uh it's a, it's a much bigger anchor to sort of uh, to deal with on the flag, so on. And, they, you know, again, their approach here is very hesitant, very disjointed. They're trying to deal with virus, which is a good idea, because you don't want to have virus on challenge shooting on the flag. But uh, it's just Irish Rebels doing some really great work spacing out, just pressuring one Wookiee into to dealing with this. And you've got to wonder, could one Wookiee be dealing with this better by using cab, maybe? We see Commander SPQR going in there. We're getting too much done, perhaps. Magnus now getting caught up in melee. Oh, brilliant kill from Sebek there, going to take down Horus with some acrobatic cav play. Now Magnus is uh, forced into a one with one melee. Great shot from Virus Ooh. as well there. Really, really fantastic yeah. work from the pole. And, oh yeah, just... Irish was really spacing out well. Ah. Playing the skirmish tactic. So, so effectively. A couple of kills back from one wiki now. But they are playing it four against six. They have managed more to the flag, but that's uh, super... So going to deal with that pretty soon. Super is going to continue raising. Matafix brings the crossbow back out, but... Uh, I feel like they haven't used the crossbows completely effectively. They haven't really controlled the space, and so that's that's limited how much their crossbows have been able to fire. Ooh, almost a great shot there from Matafix, but it's going to be a round win here for the Irish Rebels, it looks like. Keeping Matafix and Anchor alive is going to be a good result, though. Irish was not too determined to chase them down. And um, that's a couple of archers who have got a kill and, uh, and staying alive. So they could both actually, in theory, tank up next round. We'll see what happens exactly. 
no, no tanking from either of them actually, just uh, just some Akatons, if that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> Akatons. <laughs> uh, what did you make of that, Armin? Um, yeah, it seemed to me that um, IR effectively were controlling the space, even with just the two archers, so right, they defended yeah. their archers, so yeah, they gave would. one more seemed to have no safe way to approach. It was actually very nice what Irish Rebels did there. I mean, they had Sphere way back behind the rock, pretty safe. Um, with Virus, their more forward archer, they just, all they did, really simple, just put an infantry on him, keep him protected, keep him safe, and Wormwicky just not able to flush him out at all, because they've got to get through that infantry to deal with the archer, and Virus is pretty much shooting the whole round, got some great kills as well. Or one great kill, <laughs> as the scoreboard damns me. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but he caused a lot, lot of disruption. Got a lot of hits, right. <laughs> it's all about those hits. Does the team know now that the flag won't be over there again? Yeah. Looking to control the space on the other. You can see the response to that. Although, they're both of them still sitting reasonably over towards that side. One Wookiee have moved into the forest and campfire area, you can see here. Horus and Slav. Pretty good idea. Slav actually going to be cooking his horse up a little bit. Gotta have that horse hot for battle. Off he goes smoking in. It's actually a really nice flag of one wookie. Horus already up in this great spot. Horus has died a couple times a little bit too easily, up, I feel like, up here. Gotta be careful, being counter archered. Civic obviously with a great bit of cab work last round to take him down, but you know it's important as an archer to be awkward, to stay alive, to, to make your opponents work before taking you down. And uh, every round you don't do that is a, a loss for your team. And comes Sebek with the couch dance. Doesn't land it. But Sebek feels confident, obviously, to make those risky kind of moves. And harass the Wormwicky Rangers. Wormwicky needs to be punishing him for that. Early kill there. Anchor going to be bringing down Drags. And that's a big kill, actually, because uh, removing the some of the infantry meat of Irish Shuffles. That's going to give Magnus some good staying power on this flag. It's going to force Super Lily and Cav to start deal with, dealing with them as well. And... The more the cab are distracted by dealing with flag stuff rather than taking out archers, the more Horace and, and Co can get off hits. Magnus under a lot of pressure right now, needs his, needs his uh, teammates to support him. In comes Jubek with the couch, number to land off. Very, very tense situation here on the flag right now. 50 seconds remain in the, in the round. Now in come the, the IR Cav in it force right nice now. Spot. They haven't been getting any kills, so Tyke does bring down Horace. And now Super League brings down Magnus, and oh, Gibby gets crushed as well. Super League with a double kill. Super League really cleaning up on the flag right now, and that standard flag's going to get higher and higher. Sphere with a double as well on Commander Spikar and Slav, and things have really gone the way of our shovels right now. Finally able to get that foothold and really swing that round around. Henrik, is he going to dismount here? I mean, what do you do when you're just getting completely cramped and slammed? Nice movement from Tyke there. Anchor brings down Sebek. Henrik brings down Hopkin. Two against four. It's still doable, but the time is not on their side. Six seconds remain. Super Lillian Sphere. Raising that flag up. Just anchor left, and you've got to ask questions. Is he perhaps a little bit too far away from this fight? <coughs> Tyke dismounts to try and deal with him, and yeah, Jubek able, able to bring him down eventually as well. So, great work there from Irish Rebels, actually getting all the kills in the end there too. So, one wiki not even able to hold, in spite of having a great spot at the start of that round. Not a promising sign. Yeah, Sphere, Sphere took the high ground quite quickly, and he was um, the crossbow. It's very difficult for the crossbows to reload when they've got an archer, they you know. Right. That's why they need better protection. They need the cav supporting them, they need the infantry. I feel like a lot of th that round, one Wookiee's cav were kind of standing around in a group. They weren't harassing, they weren't being distracting, they weren't they weren't getting the, the work done, which the Irish Rebels cav were doing. They would just seem to be trying to defend, and you know, they might as well be infantry if that's all they're doing. Um, they weren't they weren't really uh, as effective. And I, I just wonder as, you know, Commander SBQR, Cav is not his ideal class. Um, possibly the Hagrid plays Cav normally. I'm not sure about that. But uh, Hagrid is a missing player for them. Yeah, Hagrid would normally be... Playing Cav? Yeah, the Cavs sack Hagrid and then... Right, so I think they might be missing him as well. Perhaps not playing Cav with the ideal people to do so. Because they just don't, they don't seem to be as comfortable. Whereas, you know, you're up against the likes of... Hopkin, uh, Jubeg, and you know, go like Sebek, who known as an infantry, but pretty much a revelation as Cav. They're doing some great work, uh, and I feel like if he's if he's alongside some some Cav which are playing well, and his teammates know how to support him as well, he can just fit into that Cav role pretty easily, and uh, 
he's doing some great work with it. Ooh, nice little cheeky crossbow shot there from Slav too. He's usually an archer. Yeah, he's able to play this hybrid class reasonably well. Flag does spawn in the marketplace. And just one more round here for our shop is going to give them a clean sweep on Reverend Village. Uh, in spite of seeing some very, very close rounds here, none of them have gone the way of one wookie. IR Cav on the prowl here, looking to make something happen, looking to move behind enemy lines, catch someone off on the couch lance. Anchor once again, anchored to the uh, cart area, not really supporting his teammates too well from over there, I don't feel like. They've moved Matafix to the fence, and it seems like Magnus is going to start raising that flag. But he needs some support because he's got Super Lillian Drags coming in on him. Horace has got him back to behind the wall. In comes Oh, what a shot from Virus there. That's going to completely nail the horse efforts of Commander SBQR. Civic in a couch on Gibby as well. Magnus under a lot of pressure. Sphere with a headshot too. One back from Horace, but one would keep him really cut to pieces by the archers early in this round. Oh, but the double from Horace is not bad at all. And now Magnus going to be fighting out on the flag with Super Lily. They are a player down here, one would keep, but low health on a lot of the Irish Rebels players. The flag is higher for Irish Rebels. Slav brought down, but Magnus still fighting out here. If he can break back to the flag and do something, he's got 20 seconds. He's got to get Super Lily off that flag now. He's going to go for it. Tyke harassing. Yeah. Brilliant kill there from Tyke. That's going to see that, I think, for our shovels. That's going to give them a 6 on Reverend Village. Where are the remaining one we can play? Is Horace too far away. Two brilliant kills there. But too little, too late. Mass fix brought down by Hopkin. Anchor's being Great work from busy by Sebek. Great work from Virus there, just being as annoying as possible. Backing off, backing off, backing off. Busting out the bow when he needs to. Civic is brought down, but that's going to be... Oh, nice work from Hopkin there. That's going to be a 6-0 from Irish Rebels. Looking very, very strong after the, the Reverend Village map. One wiki kicking themselves at this point, what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, they've it, it's 6-0, but they have looked very strong and, and quite challenging at a lot of points. That map, so, so the score not really telling the full story. But it is going to be all that matters in the eyes of the tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no rounds for one wiki, despite coming very, very close. Um, can they turn it around in the next in the next map? Possible. I feel like as Cav will be less of a factor, they've got a decent chance. We will be playing on Vendetta. So a decent stage, I would guess, to, um, you know, a decent setting for a potential comeback here. But all they can um, really achieve at this point is a draw. What are you thinking? Yeah, I was just wondering about these factions. Oh, okay, yeah. Crossbow factions. Both crossbow factions. Swadia, Swadia versus Rodox. Um, no, it's, it's hard to say. I th We've seen more headshots come out of Irish Rebels, so you, you want to say that their shooters are doing better, but... I feel like a lot of the, a lot of that was essentially IR just doing a better job of making space for their archers, giving them the opportunities, and that was what we were seeing um, play out there. I think the accuracy of the of the Womack archers seemed to be pretty pretty solid. Horace picking up some nice headshots there. Uh, Matafix as well. If if he can get going, he, he can be a big problem for a lot of teams. He's been getting high scores, making a good name for himself in this tournament as well. So. I think on a more closed map like this, where the perhaps the better movement, the better spacing of Irish Rebels will be less of a factor, uh, this this could be an opportunity for one wookie. I'm, I may be clutching at straws here, but uh, I think it will serve them better. I'm hoping that we'll see a round come out of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll see them take more than one round. Well, I'm sure, you <laughs> know, if, if I are take the first round, that's going to be curtains. And that would oh be yeah, the, well that there the is that, then we won't see anything. <laughs> That will mean the win for them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Veneta made by Rosh Rosh Mir originally. Modified by my by my good self. Oh, what did you do to it? All kinds of weird things. I removed water. I 
lower the tower. The tower was like huge, and I just sunk it into the ground. Removed about 80% of the trees outside. Gives you an idea of how many there were before. A lot. And yeah, I just did, did a few things. Very cool map, though. I like it a lot. How do you feel about the one-way ladders? I... I feel that they are great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know you share those feelings with me. It must be an archer thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true that. You know, it's cool when maps do awkward things. Like, why not, right? Well, yeah, I mean, since oh, we... Oh, sorry about the score, I will fix that. Since yeah. we always change spawns, I don't see a problem with um, things being a little... You don't want completely symmetrical maps. That would be boring. Well, Winterberg is... <laughs> it may be a lot of things, but it's not boring, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's <laughs> because it's our time frame. Right? Time, by the time we yeah, get yeah, to Winterberg, know, know, we're know, really high. I, so. <laughs> I, I fixed the stream now. The score is 6 0 for Irish Ripples. <laughs> Rightly so. And uh, no sign of swiding advantage. Uh, Irish Ripples, well, perhaps maybe there was a sign of it, but I are comfortable taking 3 0 on both sides of the previous map. I think any advantage we're looking at there, probably not, not too strong anyway. Would you, would you agree? Um, Between yeah, the well previous not, map, Sarah's not, as well. Yes, not in this case, I don't know how yeah, in this case, other matches have gone. That's true. I mean, as I mentioned, uh, since... Are we, are we on live right now, by the way? I think we are, so I'm going to run the map intro and then finish my thought in a second. I love that Vendetta map intro, so much drama in it. Um, I was halfway through a thought, and I'm going to attempt to finish it now, uh, which was essentially that since Reverend Village can be played in such a different number of ways, I mean, if we've perhaps seen a more infantry heavy setup, or, or even, you know, like something crazy like uh, 4 and 4 cab or anything like that, we could have perhaps seen a more potent faction imbalance. But the way the team's played it, I think it, it made things reasonably even. Okay, so class is here. Can be a bit more inf heavy from one wiki. Actually, Horace can be playing infantry, which I find very interesting. Matfix and Slav can be left to the range base. Slav was playing Cav on the previous map, so some some great multi-classing going on here from one wiki. Yes, that's very impressive. It's going to be two Cav for both sides. Yeah, two Cav. I think two Cav pretty good on this this map. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> don't see the need for more. Yeah, three perhaps a little bit crowded. Oh, I are bringing in Attila right now, and Attila is a sick player, and a player I love to see. Uh, he's known for getting very, very angry, and he's known <laughs> the angry he gets, the better he plays. <laughs> and it, that is known in Irish Rebels. So perhaps, you know, 6 0 up, he might be pretty chilled out. You might be seeing Hi. stars from him, but if one wiki start getting some rounds. Oh, Attila! Bust out the headshot on Lord Horace, start of the round. I love Attila, what a great player. One more key coming over the ladder. I asked three. Coming, coming, into, the, coming got directly into the line of fire of Attila. Yeah. Well, they, they're one on each hour and one on the barn roof. So. Oof. Attila got me some right, right in the middle of their crossfire. They're coming down. I think I'm going to bring down Hopkin there. That's a nice, that's a nice comeback. A nice, uh, nice take from Anchor there. And for one more key. Flag is being raised enough for Irish Rebels, and Womaki is just going to move on unless they just got to go for it. The problem is Attila and Sphere above them. I mean, can they do anything possibly under this under this rain of fire? I think they're taking the wrong approach here. Tyke brings down Magnus. 
doesn't look great here for one Wookiee. Irish Rebels picking up kills. Ooh, bad dodgy hit there from Drax, but uh, in spite of that, I is looking very strong. Drax can bring down Commander SPQR. Just for one Wookiee's, one Wookiee's remain. Irish Rebels looking strong. Attila and Sphere up above. The two fantastic German players. And Attila looking at a ladder right now. Yeah, Matafix knows, shooting knows that Matafix is there, but Matafix, you're not doing anything useful there because you just, you've got 20 seconds left and you've got to kill seven players. And if you don't win this, then you lose. Flags up, error brings down anchor, and lack of coordination, lack of unison from one Wookiee there led to an absolute butchery. Irish Rebels, 7 0 is the final score. They take the win. Well played, I say. What do you think? Um, yeah, well, you've got you've got to say um, Irish Rebels did really well there. They're, they're strong archers, so uh, were a huge influence. Total whitewash here. But they, yeah, that they had three amazing archers, you know, I suppose, in in great positions. But they had the flag. It just shows the depth of their squad there as well. That they can just bring in a player like Attila, who didn't even play the first game, and they already they already had like. Uh, sphere um, virus just going nuts with with shooting on the first map um, and toy as well and for them to be able to sub out toy and bring in Attila it really shows yes. what, what IR are capable of doesn't it really I mean they could possibly even uh, pick up like they could even be like two teams I think almost because there's a lot of them here on the server as well so they're clearly active and uh, it's a big step for them as well they're gonna climb up the um, league a little bit perhaps contending for uh, a place in the playoffs. How many teams make it to the playoffs? Is it top? Eight. Top eight. So, I mean, yeah, they're looking like they're on for that at the moment. Yeah, I would think so. And a scary looking bunch as well. I mean, really, really some some very uh, some top shooting from them. And I'm, I was really impressed by Sebek on horseback as well. One Wookiee just, you know, player wise, they're not bad. Um, they gave away far too much to early. Uh, cheap shots, focus not great, teamwork is really, really lacking as well. So that's that's what seemed to be the the loss for them there. And I feel like one wicket can can with just with player skill essentially they can roll over a lot of the lower down teams in the league. When it comes to facing some of these more uh, experienced high level sides, that's when their weaknesses really start to come to the forefront. And that's that's why they've more had team this, coordination. Exactly, that's why they've had this this uh, slightly bad run as of late. I do want to shout out to both clans though, because both of them actually have Twitter accounts. Um, it's at Irish Rebels WB and then just at one wookie. So definitely do go follow them as well. Also tweet at me at Captain Lust on Twitter and hashtag W05 to take part in the conversation around the War by Native League Season 5. Very cool tournament. A lot of excitement. I'm streaming a match a week at the moment, but I'm hoping to do more, maybe at some point. Who oh, I knows? Have to be quick. That'd be quick, yeah. Blink and you miss it. There's not much left. <laughs> Only I think, four more weeks. I think perhaps for the playoffs, I might try and do. I might try and go a bit nuts and just try and do as get all of those matches streamed. That'd be great, right? That would right? be absolutely superb. If we could stream yeah. all the playoffs, wouldn't that be wonderful? Shout out to all the other all the other uh, groups doing streams as well. The Bro Stream, Volcom streaming too. Who else? We've got other groups streaming. Yeah, I think I think Volcom is uh, busy and, uh, with uni or something at the moment. But yeah, he certainly started off well, giving us lots. Who else have we had? We've had the the Doff the Doff bunch doing. Uh, um, Darren, Ermanas, Avastrat, they've been streaming games, and we've also had... What else have we had? Um, so, yeah, some people have been recording their games, and... Right, um, Oliverand is one of those as well. Oliverand's done yeah. a stream, it looks like. And then, and then putting up the recordings or, or um, clips, which which is really great. It's lovely to see as much as possible of all the games. Sick. Uh, Alright then. Oh, a little shout out from Fiat there saying Superb stream again. Nice work with Aaron Trinner and Captain Lust. I like that. Yeah, good for him. Okay. And uh, looking forward to the podcast, Fiat. Yeah, it's, it's, he's working on that now, isn't he? Getting uh, it underway. Uh, Hopefully we'll I hope so. see it soon. Or hear it soon. I hope so. I'm very excited about it. Very excited about it. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Very well played Irish Rebels. They look strong. And uh, I hope to see them. Um, continue with their their fine run of form, and I wish them best of luck in next week's. Well, Wookie, hopefully they can turn it around as well. A pleasure to stream both sides. 
Thanks to everyone for watching. Aaron, Wayne, you got any shout outs to make? Um, yeah, I do. I, I particularly want to say thank you to Erm and Us who helped help me out with um, it was a bit of a rush coming to the stream. Um, so th thinking about the maps and things, you helped me out with that. And he's also been really good, sort of generally over the last few weeks, helping me with training, inviting me to some of the DOF trainings. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's, that's been really great. Very and cool. he's also um, DOF of supplying the servers to help us out with servers for the WNL. So, so oh, nice. like DOF, DOF in general, and um, that's in particular been really great. Oh, loving DOF right now. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, IR Drags and One Walkie Slav both had to chat to me before the game, talk to me about what what they who might be playing, what they might be doing. So Look it's always this. really, really nice. Look at the level of preparation, that. the level of professionalism you get on MBTV, <laughs> Warband's number one competitive live streaming channel. Follow us, it, tell all your friends. And it was shortly before the game as well. So um, sick. Uh, it's really nice when when they take time out of their preparations to to talk to us about about what they're doing, what they might be doing. And we have one birthday coming up, and that's Krista. Um, so really, right. Pemberley Sap is carried I hope Krista has a really great birthday this week. Yeah, we all do. Um, uh, I want to do one more shout out as well, which is to the sponsors, Freaky Mark Mods, and uh, to obviously us at Tailworlds for running some servers. Um, I want to also and mention <laughs> and Doff, yeah, you already mentioned them. Uh, obviously, all the tournament admins and referees, everyone helping out as well. I mean, it's looking good. It's good to see all the threads up to date, and I can look at the league table and stuff. Still on that match log, but I'm sure it'll be there soon. Just a few internal issues to be solved, right? <laughs> Aaron well, um, yeah, the match logs are all done. I've just good. hopefully uh, some people will post them. And uh, I want to say uh, shout out to Kelsey who said you should have streamed us because I presume we had a very exciting game, <laughs> but maybe I should have done. Uh, well, I want to well, shout out. one of them recorded it. Hopefully, uh, we well, shout out to the WPL who had their their final last week, which I took part um, commentating, uh, and that was very very cool. I wanted to thank them for having me over there. Um, really, really uh, very exciting final, especially, and the production was great on their stream too, so definitely check that out. Twitch.tv forward slash Warband Pro League. We've gone on for long enough, I think we should wrap this up now. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Lost Good night. <laughs>